Nuclear fission is the process in which a large nucleus splits into two smaller nuclei, releasing large amounts of energy. Nuclear fusion is the process in which two smaller nuclei combine to form one larger nuclei, releasing large amounts of energy. While it seems fission and fusion are opposite processes, they both end up releasing large amounts of energy. In this video, we will explore the energy changes in nuclear processes in order to understand the seemingly contradictory result. One example of nuclear fission is when uranium-235 is bombarded by neutrons to produce barium-140, krypton-93, and three neutrons. If we look at the mass of the components on the reactant and product side of this nuclear equation, we see that there's a mass difference of 0.18489 atomic mass units, or AMU. This is kind of an odd result in that there is a decrease in mass from the reactants to the products. While we learned that chemical reactions require conservation of mass, nuclear reactions have no such requirement. In nuclear reactions, the mass that is lost is converted to energy based on Einstein's equation, delta E equals delta M times the square of the speed of light. In Einstein's equation, the energy change will be in units of joules which is the same as a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Because a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared, the change in mass must be in kilojoules. As a result, we'll need to convert AMU units to kilograms based on the relationship that one AMU is 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. For the fission reaction described above, we can find that the change in energy comes out to be about 2.759 times 10 to the minus 11th joules for one uranium nucleus. For one mole of uranium nuclei, this would be 1.662 times 10 to the 13th joules per mole. This is about 1 million times greater than the amount of energy in a similar chemical reaction. It is for this reason that nuclear weapons are so destructive, but also that nuclear energy is such a viable alternative for providing the world's energy needs. When we compare the mass of two protons and two neutrons to the mass of a helium-4 nucleus, we see that there is a difference in mass of 0.03038 AMU. This difference in mass is called the mass defect, which is the change in mass between a nucleus and its component nucleons. Einstein's equation can be used to determine the nuclear binding energy which has the energy required to break down a nucleus into its component nucleons and is based on the change in mass or the mass defect. Based on Einstein's equation, it has been found that a change in mass of 1 AMU results in an energy of 1.492 times 10 to the minus 10 joules or 931.5 mega electron volts, which is a unit often used by nuclear physicists. We can use this relationship to look at the binding energy for the helium-4 nucleus. Since we know helium-4 has a mass defect of 0.03038 AMU, and we know that there's 931.5 mega electron volts for every one AMU change in mass, we see that helium-4 has a binding energy of 28.30 mega electron volts. In the previous slide, we saw that the helium-4 nucleus has a mass defect of 0.0303A AMU and a nuclear binding energy of 28.30 mega electron volts. If we did this same calculation for other nuclei, the nuclear binding energies would increase as the number of nucleons increased. However, in order to compare the relative stabilities of both light and heavy nuclei, we can divide the nuclear binding energy by the number of nucleons to get a binding energy per, per nucleon. For helium-4, this would be 28.30 mega electron volts divided by the four nucleons, which gives a binding energy per nucleon of 7.075 mega electron volts per nucleon. Nuclear scientists have done such calculations for a wide range of nuclei. If we plot the binding energy per nucleon versus the mass number, as in this figure, we see that the binding energy per nucleon increases as mass number increases up until about a mass number of 60. 
after a mass number of 60, the binding energy per nucleon begins to decrease. Therefore, nuclei close to a mass number of 60 are the more stable nuclei. When we have a nuclei with a mass number greater than 60, they will tend to undergo fission to become more stable, which releases energy. However, for nuclei with a mass number less than 60, those nuclei tend to undergo fusion to become more stable, and thus releasing energy. After watching this video, you should be able to describe the differences between fission and fusion. You should be able to use Einstein's equation to calculate the energy change in nuclear reactions. You should be able to define mass defect and its relationship to energy changes in a nuclear process. You should be able to understand and define nuclear binding energy. And finally, you should be able to use the binding energy per nucleon to explain why both fission and fusion are exothermic processes.